Hello everyone and welcome to another TMM review where we look at the top tournaments, top players and we interview them, we dab a bit into their minds, we ask them what they did. Since we are the Madman, it's probably one of our players that is going to be in that top cut most of the times, but today we are joined by Adele from Team Tyrants on Southeast Asia who was the runner-up in the seasonal in Southeast Asia and the winner, ours one and only, Mr. Bear. How are you doing, guys? How are you feeling after this crazy tournament and this crazy run? What's up, guys? <laughs> How are you feeling, Adele, after this crazy run and after after the final with Mr. Bear? Uh, I already said this to Mr. Bear that I was actually so happy that it was the two of us in the finals um it was really the match that i was really hoping for and looking forward to and at the same time i was um very contented with my results because you know um mr bear is very deserving of the the title as the champion how about you bear how how did you feel after your crazy run I felt really happy after the whole tournament and the, like it has been like a really long long day for me and like playing other in the finals is like an, an extra surprise because like I I didn't expect like um me being able to play him in the finals. Yeah. And do you guys expect next seasonal to have the same encounter like you guys qualify for the seasonal and then you meet each other in the in the last round? Do you have that dream at least? At least for me, uh, I'd like to rotate with Bear, you know. Um, I think championship <laughs> next seasonal in April and then he goes for the second place. And then we'll stop again uh, after two months. <laughs> How about you, Bear? Yeah, I mean, I'm hopeful that like both of us will make it through to the top card again. And I mean, let's see who comes out on top again the next time we meet. Awesome. Before we actually go into the decks that you guys can share on the, share on, see on the screen, you need some mad props, you guys from Southeast Asia, because I have seen all the seasonals and I have been the most impressed with how you guys play, with how you guys think, with how you guys go over your decks, with how you build them, how you tag them. I think from the most performances, yeah, impressed me the most. So, mad congratulations for you both guys, but for all of the Southeast Asia as well. Without Thank further ado... We are going to jump in into Adele's decks and what do we have here as our first deck, Adele? Can you walk us through the deck a bit? <laughs> yeah, I think this is the deck that generated um, the most hype because, you know, when Grappler hopped into the stream of the Southeast Asian um, English cast, everyone went crazy with, what is this deck, Ash Katarina? Like, Katarina, I think, has never seen um, like light in the competitive play. So I think this is the first time people is seeing this deck. So the reason um, I removed Sejuani, because it's usually Ash Sejuani, right? Mm -hmm. um, upon testing with like the meta decks, Sejuani feels like it's coming out too late. It's very, very slow at turn 6. So it doesn't give you any value anymore. Like the meta has definitely shifted from like a mid-range oriented meta to a, like, a very fast one. Or just like a slow grindy one and um Sejuani doesn't do well in those situations so i was looking for a, a champion that can help you um like seal games and um it was actually Aid who came up with a rally uh rally ash deck he when he used shunpo and i was like mm, that concept is quite strong because it turbo flips um ash so I tried it with Katarina and upon our testing, like it did very, very well. Awesome. And one question I have for you, was Katarina actually a tempo deficiency or could you make up for it? Because Katarina, after she strikes, she bounces back, she strikes, she bounces back. How did you deal with that issue or was it an issue? Yeah, of course, if it's like your first time piloting the deck, it may feel like always a tempo loss. But uh, you should only play Katarina on spots where you're just either a bit ahead or like way ahead in the board. If that's the board state, like 
Katarina will just seal the game for you. Like there's no turning back for your opponent. Um, because there's so much synergy with like uh, Kato, with Ryan Fan Wolf and uh, Ash. So that's just insane um combo and very, very few decks can handle like rallying freezes. All right, and from all of the cards beside, of course, Katarina herself, because she is the new addition that really made some noise. What else would you say is very important and crucial to this deck? Like, let's say, what are the top three cards besides Katarina? Uh, besides Katarina, of course, it would be Trochan, uh, Trifire and Glory Seeker, and then, as I mentioned, Kato. I think there were two games. Uh, in the top cut that Kato plus Trifire and Glory Seeker um, sealed the game for me. So th those two cards were like very, very crucial. Awesome. But Bear, how did you feel when you saw Adele, first of all in the final, and second you saw Katarina Ash? <laughs> how did you feel? <laughs> I, I, the moment I saw it, I'm like, well, this deck made it to the finals. How, 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 where did that come from? I've never even seen this deck for like the past two months. <laughs> yeah, I was really surprised like when I saw this deck in the finals. But at the same time, I was like thinking about my matchups, the the matchups with my deck as well. Uh, since this deck is so unique, Adele, what did you actually want to target with it? What were the main targets for it? What else? Fioreshen. <laughs> so uh, my whole uh, line of composition was built to like just stomp any composition that has Fiora in it. So that's the main like goal of my composition. So did that mean that your main target ban was either Feast TF or uh, TF Aphelios or the likes? Yeah, correct. So um, Feast TF would definitely warrant the ban if it's in the lineup. But if not, um, it would usually be the Shadow Isle of Ray Lord Control. All right. With that in mind, and seeing you that you said the main target was Fiora Shen, let's move to the next deck that you have brought, and the other one is Aphelios Zoe. This build is quite unique itself because people, I think, tried unique lineups, came up with all sorts of Aphelios decks, and then somehow Aphelios Zoe and Aphelios Victor appeared. How, how did you reach the conclusion of bringing this deck? Uh First is like my mindset that if you're not bringing Aphelios to the tournament, you're like crazy. You're like seriously handicapping yourself. And Tyrants came up with the um, Zoe Aphelios Shadow Isle build from zero. Mm -hmm. um, upon testing versus Fiora Shen, it didn't do so well because like Shadow Isles generally doesn't do well um, into a Ionia deck. That's why I thought of hmm, maybe if we do the PNC splash with Mystic Shot and maybe get excited in Thermal Beams, we could, you know, switch the, the matchup percentage to, to our favor. And it turned out, um, yeah, it was actually favored versus Firash and with all the, the, um, the Mystic Shot to get excited plus the hushes. Like Fiora will, will never see um, like the Fiora Wincon trigger. If it would be my guess, I think you picked this deck because it's somewhat similar with what Draven S did. Like, it stomps everything. You just try to remove everything you can anytime you can. Am I right? Yeah, and sometimes it can also function like a surprise aggro deck when people don't expect, like, how many units this deck can dish out when there's Vile Temple in play. Like, Crescendum into, like, a invoked snake the zero mana um to one challengers so it has like this um tendency to just go really 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 wide in turns like five five or below four turns four to six like you would have usually a full board if you can you know play it well and the opponent doesn't have removals so a lot of people get surprised by how many units you can dish out on the board quickly um, one of my questions would be, why just two Veil Temple? Would it be too clunky if there were three Veil Temples in it? Yeah, I actually talked to our coach Zero about this, that there are a lot of times I, I felt that three Veil Temple was too clunky in your hand. Like, if you draw two in the early stages, like, man, that's so bad. 
And um, upon um, seeing the some of the decks in the open rounds, most people brought landmarks, and mostly of it is Veil Temple. So this is also like a soft answer to the mirror, to the Achilles mirror, because I will always have the uh, landmark removal, and they won't have it. Very interesting. And this deck surprisingly runs a lot of one-offs. And can you tell us a bit, for example, I think Divergent Paths is an interesting card. Why did you run it? Was it a counter for the Veiled Temple, for example? Yeah, as I've mentioned, it's a counter to the mirror, but it also... So if there is no landmark um, in your opponent's deck, it also functions as like a thinning mechanism. I've always been a fan of that, um, you know, thinning mechanism in card games, just as Crescendo and then this Veil Temple. Right, and why one of Sparklefly? <laughs> so I think the original list that I've seen with Aphelios Zoe PNC has um, three Ballistic Bot, three Mountain Goat. And I thought, I think one of Sparklefly would be good in the build because you know you want to play as much as unique cards with Zoe and flip Zoe and then you drop Sparklefly is like insane. Elusive plus life still is like the game sealer right there. So it's a very strong two drop. And last but not least, one of Get Excited and one of Moonlight Affliction. Is this the top end, the finishing touch that you want when it's late in the turns? Um, yeah, mostly that's the purpose of Get Excited, but it also it's also for the Aphelios Mirror because you can kill their Aphelios if they don't have like any protection for it. But at, at the same time, it's like the excess reach that we need in, in some games. And then, of course, um, we've I've always been a fan of Moonlight Affliction since the start. You know, it's such a strong game closer with either you... You use it on the defense with double hush, double silence, and then on offense you use it so that they can block your uses. Then again, Mr. Bear, which were your impressions when you've seen this deck? Was it something you wanted to face? Was it something that you were surprised by? Uh, yeah, this was also pretty surprising. I did not expect like people to pair Aphelios with uh, PNG. Like, uh, Coming into the tournament, I expected like most people to either pair with like Shadow House or Butch Water. And yeah, it was interesting, but I mean, my lineup is I see Aphelios, I ban, so I just ban this deck in the finals. <laughs> I mean, I think we can all agree that this meta is either ban Twisted Fate or die or ban Aphelios or die <laughs> in the nutshell. Yeah, I also ban Bears, uh, Aphelios deck, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Aphelios Ben, nobody is allowed to play Aphelios, great. Uh, but let's move away from Aphelios and let's move to another champion that we have mentioned. No, we are not going to move to another champion we have mentioned just yet, but we're going to go to the to the main star that can deal with uh, Fiorashen and that is your Draven Ezreal. Uh, is this deck unique by any means or is this just a good solid list that always is going to counter Fiora Shen and everything else that you are countering? Yeah, it, it is um, like I made the deck like just to counter Fiora Shen. If you see, I've got the Spider, I've got uh, Champwa, I added Calling Strike, Pets Hand. Uh, and the, the spicy deck here is, of course, the Kempong Pickpocket. Because... How, how did you reach yeah. Kempong Pickpocket? So you see, when you're playing against Fioration, like the spiders just feel so bad. You know, the one the one on spider is just free stacks for Fiora. But there's a lot of situation that if they don't have the green glade on turn one and you're on events and then you drop Kempong pickpocket and they don't have the bright steel protector on two. That's just free spell for you. So they're forced to do awkward things like green glade on one and then sharp sighted on their defensive, which feels so good for me. As and die, uh, the Kempong dying is just you know okay because you use your sharp sight on your green glade caretaker one drop and then it's down to one health. So that's that's the conclusion that. 
why I, uh, I include Kempong uh, pickpocket here. Are the, uh, the one-offs the same, like you wanted to counter Hard Fiorashem, for example, I do see one of Culling Strike, I see one of Death's Hand, I do see one of uh, Get Excited. Did they serve the same purpose, countering Fiorashem hard? Yeah, um, Culling Strike was there generally for other decks, like maybe the Aphelios, Mirror, or if I encounter some random Tamket Shuraka. But that sand is definitely there to like additional ping the barrier or stop a river shaper. Get excited. I've always been a fan of get excited in Draven Ezreal because it provides you that extra reach. And a lot of the good cards in the meta right now have uh, three health and get excited deals with those cards. Uh, did you ever run out of this card fodder considering that you only play one bot and no champ pumps? Um, sometimes, but you will all, always be, uh, you know, forced into that decision. And um, I think that's the like separation of the good players is identifying which cards you can discard on on certain situations when you have to. But you know, um, good thing is like Draven is always there on three, or you know, I always have like ex excess cards to discard. Draven is there on free. I don't see that card that often on free. If it was for free for you every single time, I don't know. You're a talented player. Anything else I cannot say. All right. Yeah, yeah. So besides Fiora Shen, this lineup, what else did it target? Well, um, ironically, Kasmin, uh, on my way to like the finals, I've only encountered one Fiora Shen. And the first three games, like the top six, top 32, top 16, and then top 8, it was all triple aggro. I was like, what is going on with Southeast Asia? Like, everyone is bringing triple aggro. It was always pirates into Overwhelm or some like crazy Fizz DF decks. So I think that was just collateral damage that I was targeting for Shen, and my lineup was also good against triple aggro. It kind of makes sense because if you're targeting Fiora Shen, which is already a board centric deck, Agro wants to establish themselves on the board early and then put pressure, then probably either switch to some burn or just keep playing units if they are overwhelmed. Did you, did you encounter anything else besides Agro or did you face Agro, Agro, Agro all the way to the top cut, to the top two? Yeah, so it was Agro, Triple Agro top 32, Triple Agro top 16, Triple Agro top 8. And then on the semi-finals, uh, that's where I faced uh, Fiora Shen, TF Aphelios, and Overwhelm. <laughs> Finally, a normal person that doesn't run triple lag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I think the people like, that I played like wanted to cheese their way into the like top brackets by running triple aggro. And like face um, people who were like, playing tier 2 tier to like list like what bears playing i think that's the general idea what i've noticed is that i think they made the wrong ban they didn't ban my um zoe aphelios pnc like that deck has so much healing and they didn't ban it i mean come on guys you see healing you ban that that's your sole job you either see healing <laughs> or you see i don't know fred or desai when you see those you just ban them all right I Anyways, yeah, I think they maybe, got maybe they thought the, uh, that they can win the lottery because Agro usually is a lottery. <laughs> yeah, true, true. But now, from the runner-up, we're going to move to the actual champion and we're going to talk a bit to Mr. Bear and we're going to see his lineup. From one cheesy deck in uh, Katarina Ash, we're going to another run and it is something that you played in the Swiss rounds as well. It is Nightfall Agro. Why did you decide to bring it again in the top cut? Uh, I mean, I uh, like scream with this like into like other aggros and like also PCF and like the things that I expect in top thirty two and it it did re uh, it did really well for me in all the scrims. So yeah, I just decided to bring it because like I, I'm comfortable piloting it and it's been doing well so far. 
and I we have seen your list before and this list has seen some change in personnel for example you are now running one atrocity over the one Evershade stalker what was the reasoning behind changing these and why did you do it uh, yeah like from, from from the screams like Evershade uh, stalker like it, it it like doesn't do anything in the matchups that I want to win, like against other aggros or against Fisty. Eh? And like atrocity is like just a really good top end card on your like five hit, five damage units to just uh finish off the game when like when they are on five HP and like you don't have any other cards that can um deal damage to their nexus. Yeah, so like I just swapped out the one useless card for like atrocity, which might be useful in like more situations. And did you end up actually using Atrocity for the win or in a situation in which it was the key to victory? Yeah, like in, in I think in my second round, like in my top 16 match, uh, I, I, I had an Atrocity little. Yeah, the Atrocity won me one, one of the games. Alright, so maybe I should swap that in my list as well, play Atrocity and when people think they are safe, boom, Atrocity to the face. Uh, did you manage to grow Diana? I think the main combo that you can do is grow Diana with your Nightfall cards and then go Atrocity with a big Diana. Did you manage to do that or just a casual Atrocity on something like a Nocturne? Yeah, just did an Atrocity on Crescent Guardian. Like a 5 attack unit is normally good enough for Atrocity. Like you don't need to have like a 7, 8 attack Diana and like yeah, like don't need to like put everything on one diner and I like, just atro like you can just atrocity a tier five HP unit. Yeah, and it kind of makes sense because you are putting so much pressure that your opponent when you want to do the final push usually it falls into that range and you need five, six, seven probably damage in order to finish them off for good. Uh but Adele, you have we have asked uh, Mr. Bear what did he think when he saw Ash Katarina, but what did you think when you saw Diana Nocturne? What did you think when you saw Nightfall Agro? Uh, it's basically a pretty standard Nightfall list from like the previous, previous patches. The only main difference that I was really worry, worried about was the flight. Like, if that can generate two or three attacks, that's that's just, you know, game over for me. So. That's the card I was looking out for, but you know, surprise, surprise, it's classic Tomb Beast for the win. <laughs> uh, how important as a Nightfall Activator do you think the flight was for you, Mr. Bear? Yeah, I think the flight is just super, super good in this deck. Like, it, it's a one, 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 one cost unit and it shuffles back to your deck and it hits the Nexus and like, you never ever run out of gas once you get like two or three the flights down and it's a really good card in like matchups like where you, like your opponent has a board but they don't have elusive blockers and you can just keep cycling your the flights back into the deck and drawing more cards and having enough value to just kill off your opponent. Now that I think about it, the main cheesy cards in both your decks were cards that were initially losing tempo. For example, you had Katarina in your deck, Adele, and now Mr. Bear is running in his nice deck, the flight. But was the tempo loss that big? I, I say no, but what is, was your impression, Bear? Yeah, I don't think there's actually any tempo loss at all, because like once once the flight hit, hits the Nexus, it's already too damaged. And like other than two two damage, you still draw an extra card, and like most of the cards in this deck is like extremely cheap, so you can just keep cycling card down and like just keep um pressuring your opponent with uh, more value on your board. So like it isn't it actually a tempo loss; it's more like a tempo gain card. <clears throat> Well, if you look at it objectively, I think it's just a one mana mystic shot that generates more one mana mystic shots in your deck, <laughs> and also draws you cards. Yeah. But let's move next to the other deck and the other deck is Zoe Karma. You have brought, I think, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, Targon Ionia in your first run. What made you change to Zoe Karma? Uh, yeah, so in my open rounds I played Aphelios Lee Sin as my Targon Ionia deck, but I swapped to Zoe Karma in my top 32. Uh, this is because I felt that Zoe Karma had like 
um, better overall matchups into Targon Mirrors and like it's also pretty consistent against aggro and like I'm uh, uh, I'm using Aphelios for another deck so like Zoe Karma is a good deck to play then also the reason why I chose Zoe Karma over something like Zoe Lee Sin is because like I was afraid of people countering Lee Sin like the lineup I faced in like top 4 where he like just played 3 decks to just counter Lee Sin and like being able to like uh, like step away from Lee like really, really uh, helped make the matchup like a lot more winnable, and I was able to pull off the win in top four with Zoe Kama, and which what I think like I wouldn't have won if I played like Zoe Lee Sin. And my main question, because I have been trying Zoe Karma myself in tournaments, is did you feel at any point that you you just wanted for that one card to win you the game, but any time you just got the top deck that you didn't want, or was everything according to, to plan? I think most of the time, like everything just went according to plan. Like you just stall out the game, and like eventually your win cons will come, and like. Once your karma is on the board, after like it gets enlightened, that's like that's that's actually like really no way your opponent is gonna win you. So like you just need to like stall out the early game and like um just generate value enough value to survive. And after turn ten, there's nothing much to be said now. Like you can just do anything and you still win. And I really have to ask this, but two whole coming, why? <laughs> oh, homecoming is to make it even better into like Targon Mirrors as Homecoming is like OP into like Lee Sins or like um big units especially when you have Karma on board and like when you Homecoming your opponent cannot even deny the Homecoming I mean if they have free denies or I don't know because they need a deny for the first one they need for the second one and then if you are lucky you have another Homecoming and then okay they are out <laughs> they lost it yeah ah <laughs> uh... This is very nice. And the last list that you have brought in this seasonal tournament in the top cut was Aphelios Twisted Fate. <laughs> what was the reasoning behind be bringing an Aphelios Twisted Fate? I think the main reason is that Aphelios and Twisted Fate were OP. Yeah. You just pair the two most OP champions together and yeah, you have a deck to play in the seasonals. <laughs> is there something That's special basically... about your version? Uh, no, uh, I think I just net decked this from like some random dude on mobile text and yeah, I just played it and it felt good, <laughs> so I just played it. <laughs> right, you got it ladies and gentlemen, the secret to winning seasonal, just, re just net deck a random deck from a random dude on mobile text and then you got it. <laughs> Money in the deck, <laughs> easy. <laughs> Alright. And what were the main targets of your lineup? What were you trying to counter or to encounter in order to beat? Uh, yeah, for this entire lineup, it was just trying to be like as solid as you can, like just have overall good matchups into like most stuff and like have very little bad matchups. And like one thing I was like kind of scared of was like uh, tri uh, triple aggro lineups because like after testing a lot of games. In, for my Zoe Kama and my Nightfall into aggro, like sometimes it's still like really coin flip and like it's really 50 50 and it's up to whether the aggro will be able to high roll you or not. Yeah, so uh, mainly I was afraid of the triple aggro lineup, but other than that, I think like if the opponent runs an Aphelios deck and I w I'm able to ban the Aphelios deck, every other matchup should be like winnable because like Zoe Kama, I feel that like. Basically, can win any any single deck in the game right now. And other than that, I think Night Four is able to like one one. Like I'm confident that it can go one one against any deck as well. So like, yeah, so just go one zero with Zoe Kama or TF Aphelios, then go one one with Night Four. That was the strategy coming in. It's interesting you mentioned the triple aggro lineup because Adele said that he just faced triple aggro after triple aggro after triple aggro. Was this your case as well or did you face more balanced lineups? Oh uh, yeah, I faced like really weird lineups. Like um yeah, I didn't face a single triple aggro at, at all, which I'm like pretty happy. But like I faced like all kind of weird weird lineups with like weird decks. Like <laughs> I can't remember what I faced like exactly but like like some of them like ran like uh Fiora Shen and like another Demacia deck like Demacia Targon. <laughs> yeah, like they just had like some 
weird combinations like where like the lineup like doesn't make sense and like yeah i was able to just um, pull through with my like more consistent decks i guess it's interesting because i can see definitely some similarities both the both you faced lineups that were simply hail mary or i either win and win the lottery or i just cro roll over and die because agro is a glass cannon in a nutshell and crazy builds while they might take people by surprise if they are not consistent enough and if they don't work together they don't target the same lineup i think they just fall and you two are the reasons and the statement that that is true because you had consistent lineups very clear idea in mind on what you wanted to target so congratulations to you both guys thank you okay. thank you so much guys and let's let's ask you a bit actually do you plan to do anything with the money uh adele do you plan to do anything with the money that you have won or are you still debating what you're going to do with them i think my teammates like kind of forced my hand already um like eh. I need to get them drunk, you know, feed them with the, the winnings when it comes. So I think that's the plan. Like we'll eat in a hotel, you know, order a lot of alcohol. That's basically it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I will not ask anymore. But what about you, Bear? Did you decide what you want to do with the money? I, I mean, 10K is a huge amount of money. And like, yeah, I think I'll spend a portion of it and have a good meal with like my screen partners and my teammates from Singapore. Like, I mean, we agreed on a deal that like, if any one of us wins seasonals, like we'll treat each other to a meal. So like, since I've already won it, I can't go back on my words. And yeah, and for the rest of the money, I I mean, I'm really not sure what to do with it now. But I mean, I'll I'll find a good use for it in the future. Awesome. And one last question because before we call this a day, if you had one advice for the people watching us now and aspiring to be the next seasonal champion, what would that be? What would be your advice, Adele? Uh, that's a tough question. Actually, that question is like so hard to, to answer because there's not a single thing. Like, just do this and you'll be like what the next was that champion. one single thing in your case then i think it's just confidence and uh, like hard belief belief on myself and my decks like once you press okay on the selection of the three decks during the um the registration you you have to be 100 per 101 percent confident in the three decks that you chose and in my case like I was like praying, praying, please, please give me Fiora. In the first round, it's triple aggro. I was like, hmm. So I just have to, you know, have that confidence that, okay, let's just outplay my opponent. And I think with Bears lineup specifically, it's almost the same concept. Like, there's no hard target, uh, but just try to outplay every one uh, of your opponents with. Uh, superior skill and superior like hand reading and stuff you know um and i think a lot of it falls to experience like i'd like to apologize but i've seen a lot of jokes like hmm he should have won but he didn't do this or that so i think it boils down to like also tournament experience so yeah join more tournaments so like you'll be comfortable in the big stage very nice. And what would be that sole advice that you would give to the people, Mr. Ver? Yeah, I think for anyone that wants to compete and like achieve good results, I think having a good community and a bunch of like friends behind you is very important, like in the process. Because like I myself, like I I, I had a, like a, a bunch of friends behind me, which were like supporting me like all, all like all along the competition. Like after every round, they tell me to like. Uh, remember to breathe when you are playing in the game. Uh, don't get too stressed out. I think these are like super important to like help you prepare well for a tournament as well. And like having good screen partners with, uh, where they can point out the mistakes for you and like uh, help you um, like improve your gameplay. I think that's also really important in like becoming a better player overall and like being able to compete and achieve good results in this kind of tournaments. You mentioned having screen partners and the community behind their backs, so 
I lied to you, there is one more question. If you want to shout out everyone that helped you prepare, that helped you with the screams, now is the time. Adele, do you have any shout out to such specific individuals or teams or anyone? Uh, of course, uh, my parents still, you know, they've helped me from since day one. Zero helped me like polish my lineups and my list, like swapping out. Actually, in the open runs, I use TF Sway instead of S Draven. So in the that was the main consideration when we moved to Top Cut. So he helped me with, with that weekend. And of course the Mad Men, you know, you, you guys have always been there whenever I needed like concept uh, consistent screen partner. So hats off to you guys and thank you, thank you so much for having us. Yeah, and thank you for choosing us as your as your partners and working with us. It's always a pleasure to have you in the community with us. How about you, Mr. Bear? Who would you like to shout out? I think I have a lot of people that I want to shout out to. Uh, first off, I would like to thank like the Mad Men for sure for being the team behind me and always supporting me like in a tournament and like always like giving me advice also on like how, how I should improve as a player. Um, other than that, I would also like to thank like all my screen partners like Game Breaker, like Soggy Slobster, like Key Stick, all of them like help me prepare my lineup for this seasonals and I'm really grateful for them for like uh, like taking time to help me even though like they aren't competing or like there's no benefit to them like helping me out in, in the tournament then also i would also like to thank the people where i like got um the list from like my tournament list like on uh, the nightfall list i got it from diner in the in the switch rounds and yeah and also um, the affiliate list in deck i got it from um, Bopadop, and yeah really thankful for them for helping me out and like providing me this list and all this tech list where I, I, where I was able to play in the tournament. All right, so you've got it, everyone. You've got all the advice that you need in order to make the top cut. You need screen, good screen partners. You need that confidence. And if you want someone, you already heard some names. So we hope this video was nice for you guys, that you learned a lot. And congratulations to you again, guys. And we hope to see you again in the next SIA Top Cut. We hope to have an Adele versus Mr. Bear final. <laughs> see you, everyone. Bye.